Hello guys, so welcome back again to another amazing episode and this is the Diaspora Transition episode. We speak with people who move back from the Diaspora and currently living on the continent. And on this episode, we do have here someone very special. She goes by the name Madame Amu. She's, uh, she's been in the US for almost 50 years. She's been moving back and forth to the continent mm -hmm. from 2017, mm -hmm. you know, back and forth. And got stuck here during COVID and uh, she's here on the show, you know, to tell us her story. You know, and uh, without further ado, Madam Amu, welcome on the show. Thank you. People are watching you for the first time. They don't know who you are. Mm -hmm. Can you briefly introduce yourself to the, the audience watching you for the first time? I am Ruby Hammond, but as a school teacher, I was known as Mrs. Amu for many years. Yes. I was a teacher, became a director of a school, and then a consultant later on. I decided to come back home to have a, some peaceful retirement. Mm -hmm. wow. So I started coming back in 2017. Wow. So 2017, I stayed for about four months, went back, came back in 2019, wanted to stay for five months, and then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And when COVID hit, I was supposed to go back in three weeks, shut down. I thought I would die. I had to stay. But then in the midst of that, something great happened. I had the desire to use my land, which I purchased probably 15 or so years back. I decided to use some of it for farming. Mm. And God put me in touch with great people who helped me do the farm and now I have a few things, cassava, plantain, fruits, papaya, oh, coconuts. I have a lot of coconuts. <laughs> uh, I can see it's all over the place. All over the place. Actually, when I first bought the land, mm -hmm. I wanted to grow coconuts all around the mm. borders. Wow, to be like a wall. Yes, to be like the wall. And I did my first initial... Mm -hmm. Uh, was 125 seedlings of coconuts. Mm. But most of them died. Wow. Wow. And I was determined to do it, so I kept buying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so my family here in Ghana called me and said, mm -hmm. Ma, we are not buying any more seedlings. <laughs> we bought more than 200, <laughs> so whatever we do, we'll do. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. when I start. Wow, but it's a huge place when I got here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I got to know you by your son, mm -hmm. who also moved uh, to the continent, which we'll get to his story. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you this. You, you were living in the U.S., working and being a school teacher. Yeah. You've, you've, you've worked all over the U.S., lived for almost 50 years, mm -hmm. and something sparked in you and then you you kind of um actually something that is really? i always knew i would like to come back really home. so for retirement so for retirement i knew i would love to retire in ghana yeah wow i knew i knew yeah and so in 2006 2007 i got sick mm -hmm. i had a stroke nobody thought i'll walk again Oh, wow. But then, um, during that time, mm -hmm. a friend told me about land mm. here, near in Saom. I jumped up mm -hmm. and I said, wow, mm -hmm. I definitely would love to live away from Accra, mm -hmm. where I come from. I had property of Spinter's Wood, mm -hmm. but I wanted somewhere quiet. Mm -hmm. So Natural, serene. Natural, serene, ah, peaceful, wow. the greenery. Yeah. Healthy. I like that. I like Healthy. That. So that's when I decided to buy this land. And at first I wanted to buy just maybe four plots for myself. But then they said, oh, we have 25 plots. So I said, oh. Wow. And then another one said, we have 10. So I said, ooh, 35 plots. Now the idea started coming. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can get my children. Mm -hmm. Because three of them were born in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's not easy to bring them back. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Why is it not easy? Oh, the, they're coming to Ghana, the transition. Mm -hmm. A lot of things are different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you are not wise to raise them with the knowledge that 
hey, we are from Ghana, and Ghana is great. And I used to take him in brooms. As mm -hmm. a school teacher, I came mm -hmm. almost every summer. Mm. And I would go back with brooms. And wow, to the US. Up, yes. <laughs> and we use the brooms at wow. home. Wow. Yes. I, I wanted them to have that no way identity. Mm -hmm. and, yes. And so they became very proud of who, wow. who they are and where they came from. Mm -hmm. I remember when Victor was a kid, mm -hmm. uh, we had a friend who would say, oh, hi, nigga. And he said, Whoa. In a nice way. Yeah. But I'm not a nigga. I'm an African. Yeah. Wow. You know, yes. Even at the age of two and a half and three. Wow. So I, I really instilled in them mm -hmm. the love of their continent. Wow. Love of country. Right. And then you invited them over to, to come occupy this land. Yeah. So what I did was I, I went and said, oh, guess what? We have land and anybody, all of you can contribute and mm -hmm. we can have land. Yeah. Why? Because where your treasure is, mm -hmm. that's where your heart is. That's yeah. where your heart is. Yeah. If I give it to them for free, no. they won't value it. Yes, yes. So I said, I charge very little. Yeah. But let them pay. <laughs> you know, let them pay and feel like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they all felt like, oh, we're buying land in yes. Ghana. Yes. And right away, one said, oh, I want one plot. I want two. My youngest said, I want four. Wow. And I said, so four? He said, yeah, let's use one for basketball court. Wow. <laughs> for everybody. So that's what he did. Wow. So. And I see it is it, developing, developing so fast. You already have two almost built up already, and mm -hmm. there's one coming up by Victor. Yes, and. Yes, and one and another one there. back. Yes, wow, That's guys, my, my the land is huge. How how big it is? Thirty five, thirty five, plus. guys, thirty five plus. And you bought fifteen years ago. About fifteen? No, it's about seventeen years. Seventeen now. years ago, yeah, almost. Yeah. Yes. When I tell you you are late to the party, you think I'm joking. <laughs> wow. Yeah, wow. but I'm fortunate enough to have a friend who is an architect. Okay. He was an architect in New York. Okay. He retired and came back home. Mm -hmm. too. So he helped me wow. purchase the land and helped me design. design. I like see you're using bricks, um, the different kind of bricks. Yeah, to, to build. Yes, because, hey, mm -hmm. paint isn't cheap. <laughs> and so first, it's economical. Yeah. Building it is expensive, mm -hmm. but in the long run, you gain because yes. you don't have to pay. Mm -hmm. And then it's cooler inside. inside. Yes. Wow. Wow. And also decorative. Yes. Beautiful. Yes. So it looks beautiful. Yes. So beautiful. I think you win on all levels. I like that. Let's go back a little bit. You know, living in the US, growing up there. Mm. Were you born there? Were you born no, in I wasn't Ghana? born there. You were born in Ghana. I was born in Ghana. I left when I was twenty five. Okay. Wow. And that's, I'm that's... seventy five now. Oh wow. <laughs> wow. Yes. She looks good for 75. <laughs> God is good. Yes. <laughs> well, so how was life living in the U.S. and working? And then at one point, your son was telling me you were taking care of, like, seven children and yes. having to still work at the same time. Let's talk a little bit about it, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Uh, yeah? Well, uh, as a school teacher, I did other jobs before being a school teacher. But as a school teacher, mm -hmm. I enjoyed my work. Mm -hmm. I love teaching. Mm -hmm with a passion, I love it. Mm -hmm. So, having seven, they, we all went to school in the morning, mm -hmm. the younger ones, mm -hmm. and came back home together, so mm -hmm. that wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to move back to Ghana, mm -hmm. so I needed extra money. So, yeah. apart from teaching, mm -hmm. I sold Avon, I did some fashion jewelry, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I did fashion shows. Wow. I, I did everything. a lot. I did everything. So you are an entrepreneur by blood. By blood. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. So purchasing this land, mm -hmm. I had a vision of mm -hmm. having my children graduate and my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's okay. I, I, saw, I saw you time. have grandkids. How many grandkids do you have now? Well, I have seven by seven. By my, by my biological, mm -hmm. but my brother's three children who I raised, mm -hmm. between them, they are seven, so I have 14. 14? Yes. Wow. They all call me grandma. 
Wow. Yes. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> Nana, they call me yeah. Musa, yes. Well, let me, let, me, let me talk to you about how difficult it was, you know, convincing um, your, your children to move to the continent. Because you remember when you live in the U.S., like, there's nowhere else to go. Oh, yeah. And you then trying it's... to get them to come back to Africa to establish themselves here. Let's talk about that. How challenging what was it, you know? Not that challenging. Mm. Because in the summer... It was a blessing I took care of my brother's three children. Mm. So what he did in the summer, he paid for my children to also come here. Okay, wow. So by coming to Ghana, they, they, they started developing love. Getting used to the love. And two of them, Victor and Joe, mm -hmm. I brought them. Victor was in Ghana for four years mm. to go to school. Wow. Joe was here. So coming back, mm -hmm. I think there were great memories in Ghana that they would love to come mm -hmm, back to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But again, being in the US, mm -hmm. the top of the world, as people think, yeah. we all think, sometimes it's not easy to come yeah. back to stay. To stay yeah. But then they saw me, that we were coming like mm -hmm. every summer. Mm -hmm. Every year. Every year. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we came twice because my mother was here and when she turned 80, we decided to mm -hmm. keep coming because mm -hmm. she got sick. Mm -hmm. So we came until she was 86. Wow. So we were coming for Christmas wow. for about six years wow. to celebrate her birthday, which was great. Wow. Yes. I like that. Now me seeing you, you know, mm -hmm. doing what you're doing on the continent and, mm -hmm. you know, inviting your kids over and building, mm -hmm. it really, you know, impresses me a lot. But I know there are, you know, other family in the diaspora, mm -hmm. like yourself, who've been working over the years and... You know, when we talk of the conversation of come home, come contribute, it's almost like non-existent today. It's yes, like so yes. hard. If you do have a message, if you do have a message, right, to people like that, what would that message be? The message would be, please come home and still the good thoughts and the good feelings about home to your children. Because mm. it's important. We live in America with people who many of them know their identity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I start talking about, where are you from in my class? A little girl, white girl, will raise her hand and say, Mr. Mo, I'm Italian. Mm. And I'm like, huh? Have you been to Italy? No. Mm. So why are you Italian? My nana is mm. wow. an Italian. My nana is, my nana has been talking about Italy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A Polish girl, what boy the same. was. But when you I'm ask Polish. A, when you ask a black person, what do they say? <laughs> Sometimes you don't like the answer. I'm mm -hmm. from here. Yeah. Uh, and if you try to even educate them a little bit, mm -hmm. some were very welcoming. Mm -hmm. Some will say, I ain't from that Africa. Mm -hmm. No. Well, why do you think that is, though? Because of the education they were given, mm -hmm. or they were not given. Mm. Mm. I see. Yeah, because I mean, in '73 when I went to the state, mm -hmm. you had people literally ask you, "Do you live in houses?" Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh yes. Do wow. you live in a house, Miss Ruby? Oh, I love your makeup. Mm -hmm. oh, who taught you here? Yeah, right. <laughs> I said, no. I, I, I knew it before I came. You wear makeup in, yeah, in Africa? Africa? Wow. Yes. Wow. So it's not them. It's what they were taught. Wow. Now, you being a school teacher and knowing what education does for children, mm -hmm. what, how, you know, what changes do you think makes in a child's life knowing who they are oh. and where they come from? It's big. Mm -hmm. To know who you are. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's great. Yeah. It gives you confidence. Mm -hmm. It really makes you feel important. Mm -hmm. And you don't feel anybody is better than you are. Mm -hmm. But that's what's out there. Mm -hmm. So we need to let our children know it's so mm -hmm. important. Even if I'm so happy I'm in a village. I mean, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm learning about being a gam. Mm -hmm. My dad was a health superintendent. So we traveled. Wow. So I had an idea, but mm -hmm. coming to live here as a grown-up, I'm learning a lot. Yeah, wow. 
Wow. Will you, what would be a general message for diasporans and, you know, people watching and then, yeah, let's take it from there. The message will be, please come back home mm -hmm. and teach your children their background, their identity, where they are from. Talk to them at home about their, their grandmothers, their uncles, their, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, building them some self-pride mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and then don't downgrade everything African or un-American. Yeah. What about our brothers and sisters in the diaspora or African Americans who believe they are not Africans? If you do have a message, what would that message be? Well, they are not Afri They believe they are not Africans. Yeah, I had someone yes. tell me that um, oh, yeah. they are not Africans. Yes, many of them. Yeah. Have, yes. That it would be nice if you can do a little history mm -hmm. to know that you came from somewhere. Mm. Everybody in America came from somewhere, yeah. except the Indians. Mm -hmm. The native The Indians. native Indians who we are kicking, are being, mm -hmm. you know, treated as, mm -hmm. but they are the only ones. Apart from that, we all mm -hmm. migrated from yeah. somewhere. Wow. So please, brother and sister, you came from somewhere. Wow. And it's important to know where you are from. Wow. That will really help you yeah. grow into a more mature and a, Someone who will benefit society. Mm -hmm. When the average American living in the U.S. hears of Africa, what word comes to their mind? Zongo. Zongo. Tarzan. Tarzan. Yes. Wow. It used to be in those days. Wow. Yes. Also, you did you ever see Tarzan? Mm -hmm. No. Wow. It used to be. Now, thank God. Mm -hmm. I love our African Americans. Mm -hmm. They are embracing. Mm -hmm where they come from. Look at my daughter-in-law. Yeah, yeah. She's been here since October. Yeah, guys, yeah. I'm going to have her on the show, too. <laughs> yes. Her mother mm -hmm. has purchased land here. Wow. Her she mother and father. It. Yes. Yeah. The guy just tipped the sand, sand on that, the, yeah. Yes. Wow. On that land, yes. Because she was here with us, and oh, they're great. Mm -hmm. Now, I love the exposure. Wow. We, people, we all need exposure mm -hmm. all over the world. Mm -hmm. White, black, green, Chinese, mm -hmm. we all need exposure. Because exposure leads you to the whole world. Wow. Yes. I like that. Guys, this, this is a very wonderful conversation. I do have uh, her, uh, her son yes. also here with his wife and kids. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll bring them on the show and... Uh, Maybe watch the new show. So this is going to be the end of the show. So you go watch it. That will be posted probably right after this video is posted. And enjoy the full conversation of his um, her son who moved with his wife and kids to the continent, building on the continent here in Ghana. Thank you so much for being on the show and talking to me. I see you have a message. You have something yes, to say. Yes, I have say. a message for <laughs> our people, people on the here. continent. Mm -hmm. People on the continent too. It's sad that I realize many people are not big on sending their children to school. Mm. And that, as a teacher, breaks my heart. Wow. And when I was coming to Ghana, mm -hmm. I thought, before I left, there was something called mass education. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Grown-ups who go to school don't have the education, want to oh, learn. Okay, 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 yeah. And they have education that social welfare has. So I had planned on coming to just give my time to do that. Okay, wow. So I came in the area and found out it's not there anymore. Oh, wow. What happened to it? They told me, oh, it's not done, no message. I said, what? Wow. When I was growing up, there was that program. Mm -hmm. Where like old people still Old people, learn. those yeah. who still want to I learn. Remember it. Yes. Yeah. And but here, the young ones, many young ones are not in school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And why is it because they're still? Because I heard the schools are free now. They are free. Mm -hmm. So why are they not in school? Uh, some of them just money that mommy or daddy will give to, for the child to buy something in school becomes a problem. problem. Wow, wow. And it's sad. It's breaking mm -hmm. my heart. And I offered. I went to one of the schools one or twice mm -hmm. to help. Mm -hmm. To donate to, to some see, charity. yes, give them my time. Wow. 
but I've been busy, so I'm not doing as much as I would like to. Yeah. But please, parents hear, yes, expose wow. your children to education. Now, that brings me to my next or final question, that if you do have something really to change, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you've seen here, you've been here in Ghana, mm -hmm. you've worked with so much experience in the diaspora US, you've seen how their system is, mm -hmm. you've moved back, you've seen what is not, you know, done properly here. If you give it a chance and opportunity to change one thing dear to your heart on the continent in Ghana here, what would that be? That one thing would be education. Education. Mm. <laughs> that, yes, education. Mm -hmm. It breaks my heart. We are. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the free education that has been initiated by this current government? I think it's great, mm -hmm. but our, the parents need to be educated that Mm. They need to do something too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Free doesn't mean mm -hmm. do nothing. Don't do anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because some of the parents, I think Ghana, human nature mm -hmm. here is free mm -hmm. and they want to do nothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think free costs something. Yes, yes. Wow. Free, Guys. it's not that free. Yeah. And uh, our parents and the mothers and Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, I don't want to offend anybody, but more, <laughs> mostly it's children having children. We have it in the States, too. Mm -hmm. And they have the children, and I ask them, mm -hmm. why is so and so not in school? Oh, um, Grandma, I don't have the money this week. Mm -hmm. So this week, the child stays home. Yeah. So one thing, education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Education. Wow. Guys, we are going to end the conversation mm -hmm. with education. Education is the key to success, isn't it? It's the key, guys. It's the key. Thank you so much for talking to me. Oh, and thank you for the interview. <laughs> I've enjoyed talking to you. Uh, thank you, likewise. <laughs> <laughs> guys, please like the video, share, subscribe, yes. and if it's your first time, subscribe, okay? And uh, yeah.